안녕하십니까 혈치과 원장 박정철입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park Jong Chol with the Hyo Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about a very simple clinical case at number 46. A single implant surgery will be conducted. First, that this is the initial visit photo. From number 45 to 47, there was a bridge, zirconia bridge, and the panic part of the bridge fractured. It was decided to remove the pontic part of the bridge, and the implant restoration was to be delivered. Especially on panorama and CT, there was enough bone quantity in terms of the width, length, and height of alveolar bone, and there was enough distance to the inferior alveolar nerve. In terms of the bone quantity, observing the bone loss pattern, and if we look at the CT, normal bone and hard bone it can be estimated. Tooth extraction was uh, conducted about two years ago. A little bit of defect is observed, but uh, they would not interfere with the implant surgery. However, on the buccal side and the lingual side, the bone levels are different. So the depth of implant placement needs to be considered whether we will place implant a little bit deeper or on the crystal side implant thread can be allowed to be exposed and that, that should be considered even though a little bit of thread is exposed i don't think that would pose a major problem so an implant would be placed um, according to the plan 5.0 by 8.5 uh, implant would be placed. At the time of surgery, an incision would be made. The incision line, circular incision and mid-crestal incision will be made. The patient had a sufficient um, keratinized tissue with, so a pericrystal incision would not be necessary. So mid-crestal incision is planned. And when we use a blade, number 15 blade, um, is easier to use, but the problem with the number 15 blade is it is not easy to cut at the edge. So number 12 blade works better. The area where it touches the tooth, the interproximal area, we need to use number 12 that will cut more cleanly. In terms of raising a flap, many doctors um, raise a flap from the center, but if you raise a flap where two incision lines meet, it is more convenient to raise a flap. After raising a flap, the bone width is sufficient inside. There must have been some inflammatory tissues after tooth extraction and the bone is not filling up the space and we can do curatage here. Implant positioning. If you have a guide, you can use the designed guide during the surgery. But if you do not have a surgical guide, you can connect a bush for positioning and you can estimate the form of crown, the future crown. And then you can estimate the horizontal implant positioning. Mesodistal and buccolingual positioning can be marked using the bush. That would be helpful. And um, with the marked position, considering relationship with the opposing tooth, visiodistal angulation, the buccolingual angulation, and angulations can be confirmed step by step. The drilling would be performed 
after drilling implant can be positioned. As I said before, implant driver can be used to determine the final implant position. The problem here is that the bone level in the lingual side and buccal side are different. Sometimes mesiodistal proximal side bone level would be different, but in this patient, the buccal and lingual bone levels are different. Lingually, uh, the implant is at least one millimeter below the bone. However, on the buccal side, at least one thread is exposed. In this kind of a case, I refer to the height of soft tissue. On the lingual side, it is about 5 millimeters from the lingual flap, and we don't need to place an implant deeper than this. So the vertical implant position is set here, and the rest of here we will do bone grafting to compensate for the lack of bone. If we place the implant a couple of millimeters deeper, that will be okay, but I don't think it is uh, good to place an implant unnecessarily deep. So implant position is uh, determined like this, and AOS collagen is used. Particulated bone can be used, but in this patient, the defect, defect is contained defect and the uh, volume stability can be gained from adjacent bone. Particulate bone can be used, but it can move around, so AOS collagen is applied in this case. Makes surgery very easy, so AOS collagen is used as a graft material. Interrupted suture was made, two of the sutures were performed, proximal area. The ISQ was about 75 and um, it is a good stability so it was finished with the one stage surgery. Let's have a look at the surgery video.
This is the post of a photo, panorama image, implant position in terms of vertical and horizontal position. The position looks okay. For vertical implant positioning, without performing bone grafting, the implant can be placed a little bit deeper to put the implant more in bone and then it would be placed um, a bit too deep, one millimeter or more, or by one thread. It would not pose a problem, however, I don't like to place an implant unnecessarily deep. The position looks okay on the image on CT. About one thread is exposed on the buccal side and AOS collagen is applied. Uh, the stability was pretty good, so about two months later to provide a temporary, an abutment was connected and a temporary was um, fabricated and provided. After connecting an abutment, about eight months later, final prosthesis was to be delivered and the patient was working in construction outside of Seoul, so I waited for him to return to finish the treatment. Implant position and angle look good. On the CT, uh, above the one thread exposed, the bone has grown. If implant was positioned deeper than this, in terms of the vertical implant depth, sometimes I have to place a deep depending on a given condition. In that case, I carefully consider the abutment the cuff design that can be a very soft tissue friendly. So if you place an implant deep, you need to consider that aspect carefully. And the treatment for this patient was completed. Let me finish with this video and I will come back again with another very good clinical case. Thank you very much for your attention.